The Works Cited list is one of the most important parts of MLA formatting and can be the most difficult to get used to. Most formats reference materials in a similar way, but it's the details that you have to pay attention to. Because it was developed for use in the humanities, just about anything can be cited in MLA. Not just books and articles, but also movies, newspapers, plays, albums, or even sculptures. It's not important to remember how to format all of these, but rather to remember where you can turn for assistance. Remember those resources we just looked at before this video? They're all great places to go for help. If you're still confused, don't hesitate to reach out to a librarian. Now is as good a time as any to remind you that Cal State Fullerton's virtual reference is available 24 hours a day on our library homepage. Some other notes about the Works Cited page. The list begins on a new page and is double-spaced, just like the rest of your paper. References that take up more than one line will feature a hanging indent. This list is arranged in alphabetical order. First author's names are inverted, or last name first. All other authors are listed first name first, last name last. In the cases where the author is not known, list the title instead. Titles of longer works, such as journals, movies, and TV series, will be expressed in italics, while the titles of shorter works, such as articles, chapters, and episodes, will feature quotation marks. These longer works in italics are called containers. Items retrieved from a database will be cited differently than those found in print, with the name of the database featured in italics as a container. The container can be different depending on what it is. Containers are easily identified because they are always in italics. Here, we see that the book itself, The Cold War on Film, is a container, as well as the database, ProQuest eBook Central, in which it was found. A container for a television episode would be the entire series. For a book chapter, the container would be the entire book. In the case of articles, the container would be the journal in which the article appeared. As mentioned earlier, items found in electronic databases will also have the database name listed as a container. The other tricky part of an MLA Works Cited entry is the DOI. A DOI is a unique identifier assigned to most scholarly works created after the year 2000. It's often formatted to look like a web address. If you are citing a somewhat recent scholarly article, it will probably have a DOI. If you are citing a non-academic source online, you'll use the URL or web address of the resource instead of the DOI. Depending on your instructor, you might also be asked to provide an accessed by date at the end of your citation. It is not required to do so, but is often encouraged, especially when there is no copyright date listed on a website. In many cases, you might be lucky enough to find a resource in a database which can give you a citation for the item in question. If not though, don't panic. Remember that everything that goes into a citation will be featured on the item itself. Creating it isn't that hard. For instance, in a book, almost all of the information you need is on the first few pages. With an article, most of the information you'll need is on the first page. As a student working in MLA, you're bound to run into situations where you have more questions than answers. We all do. Just remember where to look if you need guidance.